Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Um, I think, I think we're live. I'm honestly not 100% sure, um, but I think we are live. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I've got a new, a new laptop, so um, I'm just trying to set it up. <laughs> yeah, we are in fact now below 40k. All right, you guys can hear me. All right, let me just post this in a couple of different places, and we will we will dive into the markets. I thought I used a thumbnail, but it's not really showing it. Okay. All right, so here we are. We are in fact below 40K again. Um, you know, to look at this level right now, we are, and we also are lower than we went the other day when we went below 40K as well. The other day we went below 40K back on January 10th, so about 10 days ago. And we, we held it at around 39.9. Now we've gone down to around 39.699. And I, I believe the lowest we've been, um, even, even going back to September, was the lowest we went back in September was 39.585. So 39.585 is the lowest we went in September. 39.9 is the lowest we went 10 days ago. And now we're flirting with those levels again. So, you know, I mean, it certainly doesn't make it easy with, with, the, with the stock market, um, with the stock market tanking every day. If we pull up futures, uh, let's see what's going on with the, with the futures. The Dow, the, the Dow's down about 0.27, S&P's down about half a percent, NASDAQ's down about 0.84%. These are futures already. And so that's what we're basically looking at right now, right? The, the stock market's down, Bitcoin's coming down with it, and, and the dollar is still remaining in its more or less macro uptrend. Um, so if we go look, I mean, obviously the, the shorter time frames is what we're gonna focus on, but you know, if we go look at the, um, if we go look at say, like the weekly time frame, and we go back to those, well, actually before we go to the, yeah, let me go to the weekly time frame first, then we'll go back. So if we go to the weekly time frame and look at the Heikinashi candles, I mean, you know, we still haven't seen a, a turnaround yet. And and remember, when you have large candle bodies and no overshadows, right? So we have large candle bodies, no overshadows, and all we're getting are undershadows, that is a downtrend. I mean, it's a pretty strong downtrend. We haven't actually fought it off yet. Um, you know, I mean, we like to say that it's, you know, sometimes people like to say that we're going sideways, but in fact, we are just in a downtrend right now. And and that is where the momentum is taking us. Remember that this downtrend lasted, I mean, this phase here, I think was about 11 weeks or so, plus two more weeks over here. So far, I believe this one has been about 10 weeks. Okay, so, um, you know, this is one of those things we talked about with, with Bitcoin and if 40k fails to hold, then are we going to get some type of, you know, like massive liquidation event? And I mean, so far, we are not seeing that we, I mean, to be completely honest, it would be nice to see a lot of volume come into the space, so that so that perhaps we have a, a reason to think that this would be a turnaround point. But so far, I mean, you can see that we still have seen relatively little volume. I mean, looking at it on the weekly isn't necessarily the best way to look at it when you're, you know, when you still have several more days to go in the week, but it's still hard to make the case that that so far what we've seen is anything more than just background volume represented by, you know, regularly efficient selling and not a liquidation cascade like we saw back in May, 
of 2021, like we saw back in March 2020, and like what we saw back in November slash December of, of 2018. So we have not seen, you know, we have not seen that type of, of a liquidation event yet. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen. I imagine it'll happen at some point. And then hopefully we can we can start turning things around. If we go look at two week candles, and then we're going to zoom back in to the to the smaller time frames. If we go look at two week candles, I mean we're we're, we're more or less still repeating what we saw before. Uh, basically, I think we have what six of these six of these candles. Currently, we're in the fifth one um, on on two weeks. But let's go to the shorter time frames and see what's going on and see if there's if there's any volume coming in compared to what we saw. You know some of these other moves show. So some of the things that we can look at with what we saw before in terms of in terms of the sell-offs that we saw, you know, we are seeing some volume come in. Um, you know, we saw similar volume over here. We saw similar volume right here, even a little bit more. Um, I mean, this one was actually relatively short because it was just one one of these candles. This one's more spread out, so you could argue that it's actually more volume, um, but. Look, we, we still haven't seen a, a, a major a major liquidation event. And, and some people have asked me, since we didn't see a major liquidation event at the top, do we have to see a major liquidation at the bottom? No, we don't. I mean, there's no, there's no rules that you have to play by in crypto, right? I mean, it, the, the market does what it wants to do. Sometimes it behaves in a way you think, and then other times it doesn't. Um, but I, I mean, right now, right now, I, I mean, with the stock market, with the stock market looking still relatively bearish, um, crypto, yeah, in the stock market, the NASDAQ is now down, yeah, it's still about a 0.82%. Okay, so it's down 0.82%. Um, and yeah, if you guys, if you guys like the content, give the video a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, maybe give the video a thumbs down, that's fine too. Um, but this is the hourly time frame. obviously a, a pretty big fake out here. And I, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure how, how important the, um, the the trend lines are, but obviously everyone in, on crypto Twitter is, of course, talking about, you know, these these trend lines and, and the idea that, you know, I mean, we're still we're still in a downtrend. And I would agree, right? I mean, Bitcoin is more or less in a systematic downtrend. And I think that's going to stay that way until we see some type of major volume come in. Okay, whether it's a huge liquidation wick to the downside or whether it's a massive green candle to the upside, we need some type of, of liquidation event. Okay, um, and and right now we 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 aren't really getting the volume that we want. The volume still remains relatively low. I mean, let's go look at it on say an hourly time frame, and you can see what it looks like. Still relatively low, all things considered, but. You know, if we if we start moving down in the in the mid 30s or something, I, I do imagine there would be quite a lot of people getting getting liquidated at that point. Um, yeah, we can we can go look at a few other things. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'm not really sure we're going to use uh, astrology on this channel. I know some people are talking about that. Um, someone says, should we recalculate the regression band? I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if, if I, I feel like if I were to recalculate it, I, I wouldn't use 69. 69 would actually make it look weird. I'd probably use 64, in fact, to be completely honest. Um, uh, from a demand side, from a demand side, like if you, of course, if you look at the supply side, it tells a different story. But from a pure demand side, you know, the, the demand for Bitcoin from new retail investors has just been simply non-existent since, since back over here. Right. This is one of the things we've talked about. If you go look at, at any of the social statistics, the on-chain data, it's mostly the long-term players that are that are in the market now. Um, not the not the short-term players, not the not the retail that comes in late to the party. I think that a lot of them left over here. And and maybe some of them are leaving right now as well, but I think a majority of them left over here. So you could argue that the the the, the demand for Bitcoin 
while while technically we have put in a higher price, like I mean, we we did technically put in a higher price, and of course, being technically correct is the best way to be correct. So while we did put in a higher price, the the demand for Bitcoin from new investors has just been non-existent since you know since early 2021. And I, I saw a post about that um, somewhere, I believe that you could argue that you could argue that that the demand for Bitcoin has been in a bear market since early 2021. And I mean, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to you know say it's not. I mean, I we look at any any of the any of the social statistics for for not just my channel but for a lot of channels, and you can see that there just isn't a lot of retail right now in the space. Like not a lot of re, a lot, not a lot of new retail. Um, so yeah, I mean, right now right now I guess the the question is 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 where is the bottom right? Where is the bottom? Is it, I mean, clearly it's not at 40K unless, I mean, if this, I mean, it could be that this ends up being a wick, of course, it could just be be a wick. We don't, we don't really know yet on the daily time frame. Um, we have had multiple wicks to this level in the past. So, you know, we can still hold out hope that, that it holds, but if it, if it doesn't hold and, and we are destined to go down, then, you know, I, I think you clearly have to look at the mid thirties. You have to look at the, the, the low thirties as well. I mean, this is, you know, revisiting the, the summer lows if 40k it, you know if the if the bottom falls out clearly clearly right now people are still trying to hold on to 40k because we're still hanging up you know hanging out right right below it um so there is still some fight going on but if if the bottom falls out and and we see a liquidation cascade then you know you could i feel like you could easily see it come down to these levels in the event of a, of a liquidation cascade and then maybe it bounces from there um, we saw something similar to that on the S and P back in in the 2000s, right? And I mean, I know under under the general macroeconomic conditions, I mean, there are a lot of things that look bleak, right? You have the interest rate hikes coming, but what's interesting is we haven't even had an interest rate hike yet, but everyone's already pricing in four four rate, four hikes this year, um, and we'll see if they actually do that. You know, one of the things that I, I, I'd like to remind people is that the Fed tapered in 2013 as well. And stocks still did okay. It just seems right now that everyone's freaking out over 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 what the Fed's going to do, and and the market is just you know becoming extremely fearful over it. Um, so we'll see we'll see if the if they respond in any way if if the markets are tanking uh, because I doubt I doubt they want to see that happen either. Um, but we'll just take this of course one day at a time. All right, uh, what do you guys want to talk about? I mean, right now we're just sort of watching the price. Obviously, the price is below 40K. It sucks. Uh, good chance we, we head lower if we're not able to get back above 40K by the daily close. So like if we're putting in daily closes below 40K, then you should expect us to more than likely trend lower on, on the weekly time frame. When, when looking at the Heikinashi candles, you can see we, are, we do remain in a clear downtrend. Uh, we are not seeing any overshadows on the weekly time frame. So just is what it is, right? Just is what it is. So what, what questions do you guys have? Someone says, what's the average average sailor's price? I, I think, isn't his average somewhere around 30K? His cost basis around 30K? I think we're around $10,000 away from his cost basis, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all right, I'm going to try to go through the questions. Yeah, people are asking about altcoins. Look, when Bitcoin's in a downtrend and, and we're below the 20 week and, and there's really no signs of moving sideways here in the short, you basically just assume that all it's bleed against Bitcoin and the US dollar. Okay, that, that's basically the, the sort of the baseline assumption with altcoins right now is, is you're just going to assume they're going to bleed against the US dollar. They're going to bleed against Bitcoin as long as Bitcoin remains in a downtrend. And that is where the momentum is right now. So that's just what it is. If you're, overexpo if you're overexposed on altcoins, you can always consolidate your altcoin positions to either, either stable coins or if you want exposure to the market, you can stay in either Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, and I, I do think it's fine to hold some altcoins. I, I still hold you know altcoins myself, but I don't think it's I, I don't think it makes sense 
to be, you know, to be getting a, a, a an extremely large altcoin portfolio right now while Bitcoin remains in a downtrend. I, I think it would make more sense to pay the price of 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 waiting a little bit on on accumulating you know a lot of various altcoins that you've been wanting in your portfolio until there's a little bit clearer direction by bitcoin even if it means you end up missing the bottom okay so you know that's the point right now and i and i mean i, I don't say that lightly i mean I, again i say that it's, i still hold i still have plenty plenty of altcoins in my portfolio but i'm i'm not going to go you know i'm not going to go christmas shopping for for altcoins when when bitcoin is just in a downtrend okay so i i think that's the point right like if you have if you have high conviction altcoin plays in your portfolio, you can leave them there. But you know if you got if you have a thirty altcoin portfolio, or you you're just you keep thinking like oh I'm just going to go out and go out and buy twenty new altcoins tomorrow because everything's on sale, I would say you, you know you'd be better off either either just putting it in stable coins and waiting a little bit to see you know when where's Bitcoin going to actually put up some 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 uh, a bit of a fight, or or alternatively you just put it in stable coins and so either stable coins or or in in bitcoin so let's see i mean let's see what happens with the volume here if we if we if we start going down right now we're at 39330 uh so let's see let's go back let's pull up the volume again and have the volume here so we can watch it to see what it's doing and we'll we'll look at it on a on an hourly time frame just so we can see what's happening um so here we go so we are at 39428 39,465. And let's see, let's see how many liquidations we have. So in the last 24 hours, we have around $467 million worth of liquidations in, in the uh, crypto asset class. And it looks like about 60, about 69 million of that, of, uh, 69 million of those 467 million liquidations are in Bitcoin. So uh, actually, a relatively small amount, considering uh, 66 million on ETH, 6.69 million on Solana, 3.69 million on XRP. I have no idea. I mean, what people are longing XRP here. I'm not really sure why. Um, 3.46 million on ADA, 3.38 million liquidations on BNB, 3.14 on Litecoin. Again, I don't know why you're longing Litecoin. Uh, and 2.88 million liquidations on Phantom. All within. That's all within the last four hours, by the way, right? Okay, so the 24 hours is, is uh, so the, 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 the one I quoted you earlier was a 24 hour one. So 468 liquidations over 24 hours. Um, over the last four hours, we've had 226 million in liquidations. That makes a bit more sense with 69 million of those being Bitcoin. So, you know, that, that makes a bit more sense in terms of it being about a third to a fourth of those are, are in Bitcoin over the last... Uh, four hours. Over the last 24 hours, we have 150 million liquidated in Bitcoin. Um, I can pull this up for you. I think it's actually right here, right? So here you can see it. So we have this is this is the last. So this is the last four hours. We have about six to nine million liquidated in Bitcoin, 66 million in ETH, 6.7 in Solana, uh, and so on and so forth. And if you go look at, say, the 24 hour, we're about 150 million in Bitcoin. So, you know, I mean, look, let's see what happens by the daily close. If we can get back above 40K, if we can get back above 40K, then you can still argue it's it's just a wick, right? If we can get back above 40K by the daily close. Uh, so we have, you know, a little, I mean, we still have most of the day to go, right? Because we just had a new day. So let's see if we can get back above 40K before the daily close. If we can, if we can get back above 40k by the daily close, then again, you you could claim it's a wick, and no one gets out of bed for a wick, right? I mean, I know that seems a bit ridiculous. Of course, well, we're above 40k now. Uh, it is, you know, it is a bit ridiculous. I, I get it. Um, I'm certainly not convinced myself that 40k is going to hold on the daily. It might, but I'm not convinced. And really, I mean, really, if if we have any hope of of, of claiming, right? If, if Bitcoin has any hope, any hope at all of claiming that it's in some type of Wyckoff accumulation, similar to what we saw back in, um, back in, in the summer, then it has to go up now. Like it, it can't, it can't break down from this level, right? Like it, 
the, the argument that, that the, the Wyckoff accumulation stuff is that, um, you know, you, you have this level down here and you, you test it three times more or less, right? So I, I think that we're, we're really flirting with, with not really being able to hold on to that narrative anymore, okay? And, and, and I did say before, I'm not really sure how, how, how useful that narrative is considering that uh, the, the bounces off of these lows have been relatively light compared to what we saw before. Okay, so like, like look at these bounces off the lows, they were a lot more significant than, than what we're seeing right now. I mean, this is a bounce for ants. We even, I made a video saying, look, can we bounce off 40K? And we, we barely got a bounce. I mean, it only, it only went to 44K. So that's not very exciting of a bounce for, for Bitcoin to just go from 40K to 44K. I mean, that's only $4,000. It's only 10%. That's only a 10% bounce, right? So not very, not very impressive by Bitcoin. But I, I would say that, as I said before, that if, if Bitcoin, you know, if this narrative that, that 40K has to hold uh, plays out, then you have to have, you have to see the daily closes above 40K, I believe. And, and furthermore, I mean, this is it, right? I mean, this, if this is one and two, and if this is three, then we have to go up now. Otherwise, we can't claim that this is Wyckoff accumulation, right? We, we just claim that it's a downtrend and it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. And if it is a downtrend, which I mean, I, I mean it, it is, right? We are in a downtrend. We, we very much are in a downtrend. Um, but if it is if it is just a downtrend that's going to take us below 40K, then I mean, you know, this is this area right here is I mean, we could slice through it pretty quickly. OK, this is the this is the implication. So I would say we need to we need to keep a close eye on on the 40K level here and, and see what's happening, because if we if we get daily closes below it, then you have to imagine that we could easily come back down to these levels. I know people don't want to hear it, but when the floodgates open, they can open quickly and, and you can see these moves down pretty quickly and, and going back to the stock market, you know, and we've looked at this before looking at the at the weekly time frame. This is one of those things we, we've discussed is, you know, going back to, you know, going back to the to the 2000s and saying, well, you know, like it is possible that this plays out um, like there, there has to be a, a, a universe where where Bitcoin could do something like that. Right. There are other charts that look like this where rather than putting in a new low, they you know, they put in a higher low and then they trend up like that is that is another pattern that you can find in the markets. The problem, you know, the problem with looking for these patterns is that for any for any potential, you know, outcome that you might want, you could find a chart that would match that. OK, so like we could go look at a number of charts and, and find find various charts that, that might fulfill what we want to happen. Um, you know, if you if you wanted to find one that, that sort of held at the midpoint, you could easily find that. Uh, but you could also find find other charts that look completely different. Like I, let's go look at Amazon in the early days. Um, if we go look at say Amazon early on, I mean I don't know that it's a fair comparison comparing Amazon really early on to, to Bitcoin after it's been around for ten years. But I mean you can see that Amazon had a similar move and it was a lot worse, right? So I mean, <laughs> but this is also I, I I think you could also say this is more similar to what Bitcoin did in its first cycle, right? Like in its very first cycle. Uh, way back when, um, back in in 2011, I believe, because that because I think I think in 2011, 20, 2011 here, Bitcoin fell by 94 percent early on. And one of the nice things about diminishing returns is theoretically the the the, the risk to the downside isn't quite as bad. Um, and and I think you could argue that Amazon uh, looks. I think this was a 90 percent drop, right? Yeah, this was like a ninety a ninety four percent drop. So you actually see some similar patterns in in new technologies, right? Ninety five percent drop after a major rally, uh, and then we saw something similar in Bitcoin, right? A major rally, and then a, a ninety five percent drop. So Bitcoin and Amazon more or less started off uh, their their careers in in a, in a very similar fashion. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's go let's go see what the, what the possibilities are here. So if we if we assume that 40k holds and and it's Wyckoff accumulation. I don't know. I mean, I I, I certainly am skeptical, to be completely honest. I, I mean, I am skeptical at this point that it'll hold. But you never know. I mean, it never it didn't feel like it was gonna it didn't feel like it was gonna hold in September either, and it did. 
Uh, if it does hold, then we have to contend with that, right? The, uh, the bull market support band coming down. So if it bounces, we have to contend with that. And that will not be a fund. That will not be a fun thing to contend with, right? I, I assure you. Um, and if it doesn't bounce, I would say this, the lower we go, the more likely the bounce that we get is actually a bit more impressive. So like if we, if we actually go back down to 30K, then, then we probably have enough momentum to take us back above the bull market support band. And then it'll, it'll be see if we can actually hold it. Um, if we go lower, then, you know, then you're potentially looking at a, at a stock market, uh, you know, what happened in the stock market back in the, in the 2000s. And, and, and basically, you know, making the claim that, you know, this has to hold, right? Like that, that you, can, you can theoretically put in a, a higher high and you can theoretically put in a, a lower low and somehow still manage to put in a new highs. What's crazy about this pattern that we, we talked about before is that, you know, the timing between say the peak one to peak two was actually longer than, than from the second peak to putting in a new high, uh, which is, is somewhat interesting. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's just something something probably have in the back of your head if if Bitcoin were to continue going down. But for now, the battle for 40k rages on, and and we we'll, we can go take a, a look at some of the altcoins. Let me go check in on on the on the traditional markets and see how they're holding up. The Nasdaq is down 0.83 percent. S and P is down 0.47 on the futures, and the Dow is down 0.24 percent. Uh, and liquidations now 24 hours. We have about 481 million dollars in liquidations bitcoin dominance some some weird wick is happening here on the bitcoin dominance i'm not really sure why this is going on it's, is it the Heikinashi stuff i don't i don't really know why it's looking like this but imagine if we go to shorter time frames yeah there's some weird candle down there that's catching i'm not really sure why but you can see the dominance is going up makes sense we're in a downtrend dominance normally goes up in a downtrend nothing nothing crazy about that uh the Ethereum now at 2,900. Basically, Bitcoin and Ethereum are, are both testing their September lows. So uh, in September, actually, Ethereum went even lower. It went down to like 2,600, in fact. So it actually went lower than where it is today. And I, I mean, assuming, I mean, if you, first of all, again, no guarantees that 40K holds on the daily. I, I am very skeptical myself, to be completely honest, because there just simply has not been a huge fight by Bitcoin recently. But you could, we could get to these levels down here and Bitcoin still be around the 39 to 40K level if Bitcoin bounces back up to say 42K and then comes down again in a few days and then tests it and then Ether bit bleeds against Bitcoin during that time, then you could, you could easily see Ethereum getting that, down to those levels. Um, but uh, that would be the, the level to watch. And then if we break that, if we, if we break below 2,900, then I mean, clearly you have to, you have to consider the summer lows, right? Not a fun thing to consider, of course, but you have to consider the summer lows. And and do remember that Ethereum has seen very, I mean, I, I don't mean to be a, like a, a broken record. Maybe I do. Uh, but Ethereum has seen very similar price action in the past. As, as weird as it is to believe, like it has seen very similar action in the past during the sideways move of 2016. We saw exactly this thing play out. Um, I don't think it's going to have the, like a, a crazy move that takes it up like that again. But if you if you just look at this move, uh, and you and you just sort of overlay what happened to Ethereum back then, it's not that it's really not that big of a of a step to say that it, it could bleed back down to the summer lows, right? It's not it wouldn't be that unheard of. That's exactly what it did back in 2016. It went back down and, and tested the lows one more time before finally having the strength to break out. If if Ethereum were to follow this pattern, which again probably not going to happen exactly the same way uh, but if it did it means it means we're probably not going to bottom until mid February and and then we'll still probably be at the current prices even by even by late March so if you've heard me if you've heard me say that I, I expect Q1 to be bearish slash neutral at best this is why I mean I, I think that I, I think that the the entire not just crypto, for the entire stock market too, I think Q1 is bearish or neutral at best. I mean, probably it's not really looking neutral at best right now because Bitcoin's at 40K, but 
it's hard to it's hard to be it's hard to think that all time highs are coming in Q1, right? It just simply is. I think it's also hard to imagine that all time highs would be coming in Q2 at this point too, um, but certainly in Q1. So try to remain try to remain patient there. I, I would not expect. Uh, I wouldn't. I certainly would not. I need to plug my laptop in. I certainly would not have high expectations in the short term of a of a parabolic rally. I know there's some. There are some thoughts about about having a, a a a melting up phase in Q1, and and then sort of having a blow off top in a few months before you know before the Fed starts uh, tapering, which is actually coming in a couple months anyways, but. I don't think so. Like I, I, I think we have. I, I don't think we're we're about to have a parabolic rally. I mean, it's it's kind of a silly thing to even have to argue about. But I, I do see the theories out there. Let's just be conservative and 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 be patient, and then be pleasantly surprised if if we're wrong, right? That's generally what I do. Even in the even in the run up to twenty k, I was always I was always skeptical, and I was happy. I was happy to see it continue moving higher. Um, what else? Link. Yeah. What do you? I mean, what can we say, right? It, 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 Bitcoin had a had another massive pullback. It's gotten rejected here again off the bull market support band. So clearly nothing to get out of bed for for Link yet. Link Bitcoin is still rejected off the downtrend line, right? So nothing has changed there. Still a long game to wait. I think the only thing that did change was that Link Ether finally broke the twenty week. Yeah. So I think it is it above it. It's right at it. That's the only thing that sort of changed is that Link Ether actually finally saw uh, a nice move to the upside. Um, what else? Uh, let's go. Let's actually go look to see if any altcoins are doing okay against Bitcoin right now. Uh, so over the last couple of hours, Ada Bitcoin's up a little bit, Uni Bitcoin's up, Dot Bitcoin's up a little, Theta Bitcoin, Solana Bitcoin is up, Maker Bitcoin is is up slightly. A is up against ETH. Dot's up against ETH. BNB's up against ETH, Luna's up against ETH. Dot ETH has been this thing that I'm like, is it an oscillator or is it a bleeder? I don't know yet. I mean, it, it could be a bleeder, it could be an oscillator. Um, I mean, clearly these are the bottoms down here. And then I think the question is, is this a downtrend? You know, is it is it actually gonna, is it gonna stay into a downtrend or will it, will it break out and, and come back up this way? It's a tough call, right? It's a tough call, I don't know yet. I mean, I, I do like Dot, I have a sizable position in it. Um, but recently, it, it just has not been performing that well against against Ethereum. Um, you know, dot USD looks interesting. I mean, it it actually looks like just a riskier version of Bitcoin, right? Like it like if I just showed you this chart from a distance, and and I didn't have the prices on here of of five dollars and ten dollars, I mean, it, it it just looks like a Bitcoin chart for the most part, doesn't it? Like it it just very much looks like Bitcoin. Um. So I, I think the question is, is is this just the, uh, are we repeating? Are we repeating the fear in the summer? We went from five to 10 to 20, right? Is Are we just repeating the same type of fear? And then everyone's gonna look back and and and, and think that it was so obvious? Or or are we, are we coming back down to either, you know, have an M or maybe back a W back the other way? Um, yeah, we'll have to see. I I don't have the answer for you. Obviously, it depends on if Bitcoin holds 40k. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, we're below 40k right now. I, I I'm not trying to to flirt around that. I, I clearly see that we're below 40k. Well, we're right at 40k, but we are below it off and on. Uh, it's just that if we if we have a sustained move below 40k is what I mean. Like if if we wake up tomorrow and we're at 35k or something, then clearly then clearly this trend line. You know, clearly the trend line on on dot USD will not hold if, if Bitcoin drops back to say 30k or something like that. Like it, it won't hold. You would argue that at that point dot will likely just come back down to the same level that it was at because you can see that it's basically just done what Bitcoin's done. So if Bitcoin holds at 40k, then dot will likely hold at $20. If Bitcoin goes back to 30k, then dot is probably going back to $10. That's just the way it is. Okay. So I mean, manage your risk accordingly. That's it's more or less what it is. So, um,
What is my opinion on XRP? You know, it's hard because XRP is one of those coins that is it never even really put in a new all-time high compared to its 20, you know, its 2017, 2018 move. I know there's a lot of people that are really bullish on XRP. I think the people that usually are bullish on XRP don't like Bitcoin. That's just what I've noticed. Um, but you know, if you're an XRP maxi, which there are a lot of XRP maxis out there. You know, you're one of the few cryptocurrencies that's, what, 25% of its all-time high from 2018. That's not really something to be proud of, right? So, I I mean, it's hard for me to look at XRP and, and think of it like it's a like it's about to go up a lot. Because I, I don't think it is. It's still trading at 70 cents. You got the SEC stuff looming over everyone's head. Uh, and if you go look at XRP... Um, if, we, if we go look at, at say, the XRP... Uh, ether valuation. I mean, what? Like, it, it's just, it's down against Ether. It's gone up a little bit recently. It's down 94%, though. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't really have, I, I don't really have high expectations for XRP. Not in the short term, anyways. That's for sure. Uh, and then XRP Bitcoin, I imagine, looks very similar. So, you know, you have to ask yourself if, if, if all it does is bleed, then what's the point? So uh, the main the main times it's it makes sense to pick up alts is when is when Bitcoin is is actually you know either in an uptrend or or uh, I mean of course you can always say that if you're if you're buying alts now and then it is the bottom then you're getting them for a relatively good price but you'd be saying the same thing for the last two months so um, I don't know I mean it's hard it's hard to be bullish on XRP when when it 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 can't even it hasn't even been able to put in. A new all-time high since 2017, 2018, and and some people might take that opportunity to say, well, doesn't that make it more bullish because it hasn't gone up, right? It hasn't gone up, but I mean, I think to some degree the market has spoken, right? Like the market has spoken, and if it was going to go up, it should have gone up. Maybe if the SEC stuff gets settled, then then that'll change. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know when that's going to get settled because I have no idea. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too optimistic on XRP in the short term. Um, because I mean the whole market, right? The whole market is is moving down right now. Someone says, "Well, Michael Saylor sell if it drops to the 30s." He actually said uh, he said many many times he's he would never uh, that, that that he's not going to sell. So, I guess we take him at his word. Do I think Bitcoin needs to hit the 200-day moving average? The 200-day moving average, and we're below the 200-day moving average right now, so I'm not sure. I mean, that would have, we'd have to go back up to 48.6K. I'm not really sure what that would get us. I mean, even if we're at 48K, we still, we're still well below the all-time high. So I don't, I mean, I, I know there are a lot of people that are, are generally bearish when we're below the 200-day SMA, um, but I don't, I don't really think it bears a ton of weight at the, at the current time. Um, sorry, there's a lot of comments. I'm trying to read them, but they're going by so quickly. Uh, someone says, check the monthly MACD. I'm guessing it is crossed down now. Okay, here's the monthly MACD. Am I, I, I don't I mean, I'm assuming I'm watching what you're, I'm looking at what, it's not, I don't see it crossing yet. I mean, it crossed on the weekly a while ago, right? It's like it, it crossed here back in the summer. It, it sort of hit its peak during the middle of the summer lull in June. And then it started moving higher by the end of the summer lull and then and then started and then turned green again and then here it turned red you know once the downtrend started and now it's still slowly moving down we haven't really seen it uh level out or anything at this point so 
Someone says, look at the log scale long term trend line. I'm not really sure what you mean by the long term. There's a lot of long term trend lines, right? I mean, I, I don't know what long term trend line there's. There's all sorts of long term trend lines you could draw. I've seen some people draw this one, right? Taking the top here, going through there. <laughs> We've seen uh, what this one as well, taking uh, from the from that. That's another. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what long term trend line you mean. Bitcoin has been following the U.S. 10-year bond yield for quite a while. We've seen the bond yields rising. Do you think that we'll be telling them what Bitcoin will do? Yeah, we, we actually, I, I think I talked about that in a video, but it hasn't been following it anymore, right? Um, it, it, it was following it for, for a little while. Sorry if I can. Sp it was following it for what? Like, um, huh, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. What was it under? I can't even remember. It was under, um, yeah, there it is. So I think you're talking about this, right? Let me, let me pin this to the right scale. So yeah, so I think this is what he's talking about. He's, we're talking about this, the, the 10 year, the 10 year treasury, uh, the bond yields here. It was a pretty good, you know, I mean, it was a pretty good one-to-one um, -one comparison here for a long time, right? Like if, if the yields were going up, Bitcoin was going up. If the yields were going down, Bitcoin was going down. And, and then recently you actually see some, some like divergence between the two, right? Like Bitcoin, Bitcoin's going down while the, while the 10 years going up. So, yeah, I mean, there certainly was some correlation there. But I mean, it seems like at least in the short term, that correlate that correlation has has more or less dissipated, unless it's just v lagging a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, right now you can see it. So they sort of diverged right at that point, because if if Bitcoin were following this, then it would have already you know would already it would have already had a move up up higher, but it, it stopped following it back in in mid December. So. Someone says it's a bear market for a while. Look, you know, everyone always asks, is it a bull market? Is it a bear market? As far as I can tell, Bitcoin hasn't really even been that bullish since, you know, since back over here, right? I, I, I mean, you know, I, I made a video calling this a bear market, and then and then people had a had a had a fit over me calling it that. So, you know, you call it whatever you want. When when the when Bitcoin is below its um. You know, when it's below the 20, when it's below the bull market support pan, I, I don't consider that bullish, right? It's bearish. Okay, so like any of these phases is a bearish phase in the market. It's not a bull market uh, when 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 you're going down 55% in, in three months. Now, some people will say, I, I think there's like, you know, there's some there's some terminology that, that we have to get right, right? There's, there's, you can have, I think you can have many bull markets in a, in a market cycle and many bear markets in a market cycle uh, but you can have multiple phases. I think part of the part of the confusion is that like everyone looks at the last cycle as their benchmark, where you had one clean bull market and then one clean bear market. But but this market cycle has been anything but clean. You know, you had you had a brief bull market followed by like a seventy percent drop, right? And then you had another bull market followed by a fifty five percent drop, and then you had another two x move followed by at least a forty one percent drop. So, um, yeah, I, I think I, I think it's really it's really challenging talking about bull markets or bear markets because everyone has sort of this like definition in their head of what it is, but the market is, has looks a lot different today than it than it did back over here, right? Like this was just one systematic uptrend, and and we did not have you know long down periods. Even the forty percent corrections only lasted a few weeks, right? Two or three weeks, and we were back up. This one is completely different. Right, like we had a 4x move, and then we went down 70% over half a year. We had another really nice move, like 15x move, and then we dropped 55% over three months. 
another 2x move, and now we've been dropping for two months. So I mean, this this cycle is completely different than the last cycle, right? It's it's just completely different from it. It doesn't look it doesn't look like it at all, um, and so I guess that your your definitions have to be somewhat qualified. You guys ask me about all these theories, like I'm supposed to know what all they are. I don't, I don't know what all these are. The parabolic wave theory? Yeah, someone says Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Actually, yeah, let's actually go look at a couple of these things. So let's go watch, let's go look at Bitcoin divided by M2. Um, yeah, fairly uneventful, to be completely honest. Nothing really too interesting. And then we can, we can look at... Um, Bitcoin divided by the SPY. So Bitcoin divided by SPY looks like that. So if you look at Bitcoin divided by SPY, and I actually probably need to switch this back over to the normal candles. Um, so where we are, right? So I don't know. I mean, it, it, I mean, actually, qualitatively, it's basically the same thing as, as dividing by the US dollar. So um, I'm not really sure how how useful it is. It looks it actually looks pretty similar. In fact, the main difference, I guess, between dividing by 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 the S and P uh, by SPY and and the U.S. dollar is that Bitcoin did not put in a new all time high when looking at it at it this way. Someone says, why are there only 5,000 people watching? I told you guys, retail left, right? I mean, like, if you're here, like, this is this is the truth. Like, I'll tell you the truth right now. Like, if you're here, you're 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 more than likely going to be here until things get better, right? Like, you're, you're just stuck with us. Um, and that's just the way it is. Like, I, I don't I don't control the way it is, but that's more or less the way it is. If you if you want to peace out for a while and, and come join us when when the market looks better, that's fine. OK. But if you're still here and you, you manage to, to deal with all this, then, you know, I mean, we're, we're you know, we're at 39K. Like, I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. We're, we're, we're still in the same range. So if, if this didn't scare you over here, then I don't, I don't know why this would, would necessarily scare you. So I imagine if you're watching today, you're still watching, you're just, you're going to be here for a while. Um, I can show you guys the, the YouTube analytics if you guys want to see them. Maybe that will give you guys some insight. So let's go look at those. Okay, so here's the YouTube analytics. All right. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I keep. This is what I've been saying for the last six months. Everyone keeps asking me if Bitcoin's in a bull market or if it's in a bear market, and all I see, all I see on my end, right? I'm just telling you what I see. I just keep saying like it's just gone sideways. Like I, I don't. I mean, over the macro scale, it's going sideways. Locally, we're in a downtrend. We're in a brutal downtrend locally. This is. I mean, this sucks. It's not fun. This was not fun either. It just is what it is. This was actually a little bit more fun for me than this one because over here, I took a lot of profits up here. It's the truth. I, I took a lot of profits over here, and I, I warned you guys that we were too far ahead of schedule. Um, to be completely honest, I didn't take profits over here. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Uh, it's easy It's easy to take profits with this kind of a run-up, right? Like, it's it's super easy. for It was super easy for me to take profits uh, with that kind of a run-up. It, it just made a lot of sense. Um, but now it's just back to the... Um, 
the the boring the boring DCA and and you become numb to price movements for a while until it actually does something interesting. Um, but you know, people keep saying, well, is it bullish or is it bearish? And I just say, well, look, I mean, Bitcoin is at this price literally a year ago, more than a year ago. This is not, you know, if Bitcoin's at the same price it was a year ago, I, I don't know how you say that's a bull market. It, it might be a market cycle with like a, a year a year sideways movement in between. But in, in my mind, when I think of a bull market, I think about prices moving higher, not prices going sideways for a year. OK, and I think that's best reflected in the YouTube statistics. OK, so so just buckle up here. Right. Views, 66.2 million. But look, I mean, look at look at this bubble over here that was created when we went to 64K for Bitcoin. And, you know, if you integrate this, right, if you take the volume um, or if you take the area under the curve, some of you guys weren't paying attention in calculus, probably then and you and you uh, if you discretize it right, and you add them all up. You get the area under the curve, and this one is is obviously has a lot more, right? There's a lot more views going on over here than than more recently, and that's why I keep saying that the move to 69k, while we technically did put in a new high, it, it, it's not it's not any new retail. It's just it, it's just me and you buying Bitcoin, like or or trading your altcoins for Bitcoin. Like it's just. It's just us. It's not. There's not new people here right now. If you're here now, let me ask. Let me ask the chat this: Is there anyone in the chat that's here now that wasn't here in the summer? Like, was is there anyone that's here now that wasn't here in the summer? I'm going to speculate that 99% of the people here today were probably here in the summer. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I think that I think that most people here today were were also here in the in the summer um so more or less sideways right more or less sideways all right watch time you can see this massive run up over here. And then ever since then, it's basically just been going sideways. So the run up has not continued, meaning what does that mean? Right? No new retail, right? It's no new. There's no new retail here. It's just the same. It's just the same people watching subscribers. A lot of them, a lot of them subscribed over here. And it's been it's been pretty, pretty small ever since. Uh, so not a not a whole lot going on on the subscriber front either uh, compared to compared to what happened back in the first four to five months of of 2021. Okay, so um, right, it just is what it is. Uh, if you're curious what this wick is here that went up, that's the Coin Bureau effect. <laughs> he he gave me a shout out on his channel, and so that if you're if you're curious like why there's just this sudden spike, that's because of that. And then if you wanted to do some TA on my on my estimated revenue from AdSense, uh, I suppose you could do that. So we've been at we've been at zero dollars for for many years now, and. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I think we're going to hold resistance at zero dollars for for quite a bit longer. Probably also hold support there. Maybe we'll be maybe we'll be a, uh, an optimist and say we'll hold support at zero dollars for for many years to come. Hopefully, uh, but we'll see. We'll take it one day at a time. You never know. These things are <laughs> these things can go sideways for a while, and then I'm not I'm not going to turn that since on. Don't worry. Um, but. Thought it was thought it was interesting to uh, they show you your uh, your your chart here of zero dollars. I just always forget to you know I always forget to turn the AdSense thing on, so we're still at zero. Um, all right, let's go back. Bitcoin's at thirty nine. Thirty nine eight fifty four. I have this like, you know, I have this feeling <laughs> we're either going to we're either going to get back above 40k by the close or if we don't and and we start going lower then we we could easily I think we would easily see a, a liquidation cascade, okay? So you need to be you need to be prepared. We 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 you can smell it in the air, right? The fear is in the air. Um it, it doesn't seem like it, it, something's got to give, right? <laughs> something's got to give. We're either going to go up and, and wreck shorts, 
uh, and, and have a liquidation cascade to the upside, which is probably not what most people are expecting. I imagine most people are expecting the downside, which I am too, to be completely honest. So maybe it'll, it'll take everyone by surprise if it goes up to the upside. Uh, but we, we, we need some type of major volume, a liquidation cascade in, in some direction, a lot of volume coming into the space. And I, I just think something's got to give at some point, you know, you, we're not going to, we're not just going to hang out right below 40 K forever. It's either going to, it's either going to hold and we're going to move higher or it's going to give, and we're going to move much lower into the $30,000 region, maybe to the mid thirties or, uh, somewhere around there. Someone said my revenue is holding the line. That's true. That's about the only thing holding the line right now. All right, let's see what questions do we have. Um, Some people say they're selling, it's funny because some people are saying they're selling the family farm to buy the dip and other people say they're just selling all their crypto. Clearly you have def two different trains of thought here. Um, someone says they might sell their house if they see 30K. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. Make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up if you like the content. If you hate the content, give the video a thumbs down. That's fine. I mean, to be completely honest, I think the algorithm doesn't distinguish between thumbs ups and thumb, it, it, the interaction, right? It's the interaction. So you can give it a thumbs down if you want. Someone says, if you're risky, would VET be a good buy? Ah, uh, whenever I think about VET, VChain, I always go back to the VChain Ether valuation. And, and it, is a, it is at a pretty low level, but you know, if I were to speculate here, on, on VeChain ETH, which is, is certainly one of the more interesting charts to look at. Uh, I, I'm, thinking that, I, I'm thinking that it's more likely that it, it's going to come down probably again before it has a chance of going up. This is just what I would speculate. You know, we, we've seen these phases before with VeChain ETH where it sort of puts up a fight and then it bleeds back down to the line, right? Like it, it sort of puts up a fight. This one didn't bleed back down to the line, but it had already gone to the line before it. Um, it sort of put up a fight here and then it bled down to the line. And then again here, it started putting up a fight. I'm, I'm still thinking that it's more likely that VeChain is probably going to bleed another 20% or so, at least against Ethereum, before, before seeing any type of positive price movement against ETH. So I don't offer financial advice, um, but I, I'm personally not super bullish in the short term on VeChain. I, I think we probably have at least another month or two um, of, of it being somewhat bearish against Ethereum before potentially seeing, seeing something change. Someone asked what traditional markets are looking like for tomorrow. Uh, to be completely honest, they look incredibly bleak right now. The, the NASDAQ is already down 1.41% on futures. Uh, the S&P is now down 0.92%. The Dow is down 0.57%. I imagine this has something to do with the reason Bitcoin is continuing to crash. Uh, do know, though, I mean, it can swing pretty quickly. Today, the NASDAQ went out to basically being up 2%. And then by the close, it was down like 1.34%. So it swung like over 3% within just a few hours. So while it is down 1.4% now, um, uh, there's no telling what it's going to look like in the morning. But but right now, obviously, the sell-off is is continuing. And it looks like the, the value of it right now is at 14631 and, and right now, you can see on, on, on here, it's at 14846 So futures are already pricing it uh, a couple hundred dollars lower than, than actually where it currently is. So uh, right now, it's looking relatively bleak. Maybe tomorrow it'll change. I don't know, but in the short term, it—I it, mean, I—I I think we have some. 
some carnage to get through. I mean, even if even if we do, you know, come down and then sort of trend back up, we, we're, this is going to be a long, drawn out process uh, if if that happens. Um, Someone says Litecoin will never reach an all-time high again. You could be right. I'm not super bullish on Litecoin at all. I don't even own Litecoin. How's the corridor? Um... Here it is. So, and you can see it's did a decent job, I guess, in the summer. Right now, the lower bound on it is at 34. Just below 34K is, is where the lower bound is right now on it. Um, I mean, you can see it hit this one three times in the summer. But when it hit it in the summer, it was actually at like 30K. Uh, so for it, I mean, but it's actually starting to roll over here again. So if it, I mean, if it starts coming back down, then this could easily, you know, it could it could easily be lower than that. Um, so, but yeah, right now it's it's right around 34k. When does the daily close happen? Um, it happens at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, or I mean, you can go figure out what time zone that is for you. Yeah, the, I mean, the daily close from right now it was three hours ago, so the next one will be in 21 hours. So whatever time it is for you now, fast forward 21 hours, and that's when the daily close is. A little less than 21 hours because we're six minutes past the hour. Someone says, is the Bitcoin dominance going to go to a new low? I, I think it's more likely the Bitcoin dominance goes up uh, in the short term than goes down. Do I see 100K Bitcoin for 2022? Yeah, maybe, but I, I've said before, if it's going to happen in 2022, it's going to be the end of 2022. Not, not in Q1, not in Q2. Q3, the earliest. Uh, and even then, I, it might go into 2023. But I always said I didn't think it was going to be in 2021. At least that turned out to be true. Um, now it's 2022, obviously, you know, right now we're in a downtrend, so everyone's going to be super bearish and, and not be able to think about 100K. Um, but if it does happen in 2022, like if you told me Bitcoin does hit 100K in 2022, uh, you know, and, and you tell me when do you think it would happen, I would say probably, probably in the end of 2022 is when it would hit it, if it's going to hit it in 2022. I already talked about Link. Everyone asking about Link, but I already, already talked about Link. I'm not really sure. I mean, the whole market's down right now, so the 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 Link, the Link. Um, let's see. Sorry, my mouse wasn't like working there for that. Yeah, Link Bitcoin is is still is still sort of getting rejected here off this um, same trend line it's been rejected off before. So it's actually interesting to look at this corridor on other pairs to see like what it looks like because it always looks somewhat interesting. Like if you go look at at it on like Ether Bitcoin, it look like we're kind of like right in the middle of it. If you go look at it on say Ether USD, the bottom of it is right around twenty five hundred right now. Um, if you go look at it on ADA, we're right at the bottom of it. If you could look at it on Litecoin, we're at the bottom of it. Matic, sort of in the middle. XRP, we got to be near the bottom. Yeah, we're near the bottom on XRP. Um, yeah.
Yeah, I know. But we, we people have talked about the, the you know the idea of an ascending triangle on Bitcoin, which look, I mean, you could be right, but it's one of those things where <laughs> it, it, it's hard to know until it prints, right? Like, is, is it a is it an ascending triangle or you know is this what's going to happen? Like, is it going to bounce here, bounce here, come up here, and then bounce again and go up higher, or is that too optimistic and it's just going to come back down? You know. And then maybe bounce here, and then and then and then we got to figure out what we're doing. All right, guys. I think we'll wrap it up. I mean, we're we're still trading. Just well, maybe maybe we'll see if if we get any type of movement. We're now at thirty nine six. Um, I don't imagine there's been very much volume because we the price hasn't really moved a whole lot recently. Uh, I mean, we are putting in lows on the day for sure. Um, looks like the lowest we went today was 39,263 so far uh, in, the, in the last hour or so. Right now we're at 39,617. If we pull up the volume again, I mean, we're getting some volume, but it, it's actually still not really that substantial, right? It, it's, not a, it's not a substantial amount of volume yet to consider it to be some type of liquidation cascade. This is just people, people are just going out and selling right now. There's, I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing a ton of liquidations. There are some, um, to the tune of about half a billion dollars, but I, I, I mean, to, to actually see what we're looking for, we want to see it a lot, a lot larger than half a billion dollars. Um, it's just what we want to see. Thirty-nine five fifty-five. Thirty nine five seventeen, thirty nine four. Let's see what happens here. It's kind of crazy how much how much more fear there is now than in the summer. But I think people I mean, I think people are just getting tired. Um, they're getting drained of, of the market. Has has MicroStrategy bought any Bitcoin in 2022? Actually, I don't I don't remember seeing it if they had. I don't think they have. But someone wants to look at normal candles. All right, we'll pull up normal candles. We can go to the five minute time frame if you guys want. Someone says that 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 MicroStrategy has bought. I, are you sure? Was there a tweet about it? The one second chart. All right, here's your one second chart. Thirty-nine five seventy-five. Yeah, I saw Elon tweeted about crypto today. I'm not sure that he's gonna have the same effect on the markets as he as he once did. <laughs> Someone says they see green in here. 
Yeah, I mean, I think to see green at this stage, you have to look at, at short time frames. Some people say the one second chart is how you trade. I'm not sure about that. What did Elon say? I think he just posted a meme about interstellar or something and and cryptocurrencies and how it feels like, you know, seven years in the real world or seven years in or one hour in crypto feels like seven years in the real world or something like that. All right, everyone keeps saying that this that micro strategy has bought in um, in 2022. So I must have missed that. I'll have to go. I'll have to go check. I I, I remember that they bought in 2021 at the near the end of 2021, but I, I didn't know they bought in 2022. Yeah. So you guys are saying he bought 94.2 million between December 9th and December 20th. I'm talking about in 2022, not in the last year. I know they bought in the last year. I'm saying in 2022 has, has MicroStrategy bought. Yeah, I think it was in December. All right, we are at 39, 530, 523. All right. 490, you see the volume coming in on the second time frame, right? Um, 495, 497. All right, guys. Um, how long have we been going? We've been going for a while, right? Unfortunately, I cannot sit here all night, but I, you know, at least we, at least we talked about Bitcoin, talked about crypto. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we don't know yet if 40K is going to hold on the daily. It very well might not. And if it doesn't, and we end up going down, then uh, buckle up, you know, because we'll, we'll, we're probably going to have a liquidation event one way or another, whether the shorts are getting racked or the longs are getting racked. Um, it seems like, you know, with the, with the amount of um, emotions right now in the market, I don't know. It just seems like it's going to be hard for us to just stay at 40K or 39K. Like we're, we're going to head one way or the other relatively soon, I think. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you guys if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. Um, and uh, we will see you guys next time. And, and we'll, we'll obviously see if what happens with Bitcoin tomorrow and, and where it where it ends up being up. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.